Has Dragon Ball Super actually fooled you at some point while you were watching it? Well, no matter how predictable or shocking Dragon Ball has been over decades, unexpected moments have been ingrained into the Dragon Ball domain since its humble beginnings. And with this April Fools video today, we will be ranking Dragon Ball Super's top 5 moments where the show completely tricked us from what we were expecting. So let's jump straight into the discussion and get on with number 5. Starting off, we have to go on to Majin Buu not participating in the Tournament of Power. Now, as you guys would all know, this isn't the first time that Dragon Ball Super has done this. We know from the Resurrection of F movie and the Resurrection of F saga that Majin Buu essentially transformed into Snorlax and fell asleep throughout the entire arc, missing a major battle with Frieza and his henchmen, and also missing out on participating in the Universe 6 tournament where he would be fighting alongside Universe 6. But I feel like the tournament of power is by far the biggest violation of keeping Majin Buu out of the Dragon Ball story because when you actually look at the intro to Limit Breaker Survival you would actually see that Majin Buu was actually fighting in that intro a lot of the promotions before Frieza was announced to be coming back showed Majin Buu actually participating in combat as well so everybody believed that Majin Buu would actually be, be joining in on the fight and we even see that sequence when Majin Buu transformed into Skinny Buu and had that brief sparring session with Goku to show us that he was once again getting in shape. But I do think in looking at this in hindsight that there are reasons to explaining as to why this probably happened. Majin Buu has a much weaker character story than Frieza, so obviously if you have a much more cerebral character like Frieza who has his own ambitions, that can create a superior story arc as opposed to having Buu who is essentially just a naughty child with a lot of power. And in addition to this, I also think that when you analyze Majin Buu's abilities to transform people into chocolate and to potentially just throw them out of the arena without necessarily killing them, you could argue that straight up, even without being stronger than his opposition, Majin Buu's abilities would essentially make him OP in a Tournament of Power when you combine that with his regeneration ability. So although I could understand the direction of excluding Majin Buu from the Dragon Ball story, Super definitely tricked us by removing him from many of the battles that we expected Buu to be in. Now coming in at number 4 we actually have a very interesting sequence in which we all believed or many of us believed that Hit actually killed Goku. But the thing that I remember the most about that sequence is that many people were expecting that this could actually lead up into a much bigger plotline with Hit actually being a villain. Many people were theorizing that Hit is coming back to kill Goku because he's actually evil. Many people were saying who actually hired Hit to do this and we would all find out that in the most Dragon Ball way possible, it was really Goku who wanted to test his own power. And even if Goku really did actually die, we all know as Dragon Ball fans they would have found a way to just wish him back with the Dragon Ball anyways, but for that brief moment it was extremely believable to think that Goku did die from Hit. And if we go even a little bit further back from this conflict between Goku and Hit, we would actually go back to the future Trunks arc and I think there was a revelation that was extremely underrated in that arc, which would be the survival of Yajirobe. Now, as a long-term Dragon Ball fan, I feel like this hits me more than anything else on this list, because if you go with the filler episode of Dragon Ball called A Ghost From Tomorrow, you would actually find out that in that episode specifically, Yajirobe was shown being killed by the android. So from that sequence, Yajirobe was nowhere near Korin's tower or even near Korin, so for all of those years, we would have all believed that that filler episode would have gave us some indication that Yajirobe died. And if we go with the history of Trunks and the Dragon Ball manga, Yajirobe was never mentioned, so at most, we would have probably have believed that Yajirobe would have been dead. And Dragon Ball Super shocked us by saying that Yajirobe actually did indeed survive the conflict with the androids, as Korin essentially gave his life to protect Yajirobe, so that's definitely a revelation worth mentioning. And as we move on to the top two spot on this list here, guys, we gotta go all the way back to the Universe 6 tournament. So, Dragon Ball Super did cleverly present Monaka's character in a very mysterious way. 
When we first see him throughout the series, we all felt that Monaco was actually extremely powerful because why else would Beerus recruit a character to fight for Universe 7's behalf if that character is in fact weak? And one of the moments that actually suggested that Monaco was a lot stronger than we actually believed would have been that moment where we see Goku, even in his base form, punching Monaco straight in the face and Monaco survived that. And although that was a gag moment, which was obviously created for humor, I'm sure most people would agree that a base Goku punching you directly in the face would probably kill or severely injure most people throughout the Dragon Ball stratosphere. And although Monaka is not a major character throughout Dragon Ball Super, he did in fact defeat Hit with that unconventional ending to the Universe 6 Torment. And on top of that, for a long time, a lot of Dragon Ball fans truly speculated how powerful he actually was. And to think that he was a cargo driver that was paid off by Beerus to fight for Universe 7 was actually even more intriguing. And last but not least, coming in at number one takes us all the way back to the Torment of Power. And this would be Android 17 surviving the fight against Jiren. Now, the thing that really made this spoiler and this specific moment the most shocking moment that Dragon Ball Super has ever had is the fact that the spoilers didn't indicate anything about this. You see, we live in a spoiler culture nowadays. When it comes to Dragon Ball or Walking Dead or Game of Thrones or any other type of series out there, there's usually some type of spoiler that would indicate something major that's going to happen. It leaks on the internet and everybody kind of knows in advance. And Android 17 surviving in that fight against Jiren was something that not even the spoilers picked up, and it was something that we couldn't have possibly have believed because 17's body completely vanished from the Torment of Power. But if we were to compare this to Mai from the future Trunks arc, we all expected that Mai might have been alive because her body wasn't eviscerated the same way it had to Bulma when Goku Black killed Bulma throughout that arc, and in addition to this, it was also revealed ahead of time that Mai was going to be one of the feature characters of the the future Trunks arc, so if you're gonna kill off Mai that early, it wouldn't make any sense based off of how much voice acting it was said that she was going to have throughout that arc. So we all expected that Mai might actually be alive. And if you compare this to another sequence that almost got us in Dragon Ball Super with Master Roshi dying throughout the Torment of Power, the difference there would be the fact that we actually saw Master Roshi look and appear as if he was dead for a brief amount of time, as opposed to 17 who completely vanished from a powerful attack. So I I think actually seeing Master Roshi appearing as if he actually died gives us a different feeling as opposed to 17 where we all believe that he was gone, especially dealing with how people reacted to that. And in addition to the top 5 list that we just discussed, I want to give you guys 3 fan theories and fan expectations that really went in a completely different direction. And one of the things I wanted to mention you guys as an honorable mention would have to be Frieza and Frost. So from the beginning of the Torment of Power when it was revealed that Frieza was going to be coming back and that Frost was going to be participating for Universe 6, everybody believed that Frost and Frieza were genuinely going to team up. And for a brief moment throughout the Torment of Power, that actually happened. Happened. The only difference is the fact that when you look at how everything turned out, we would find out that Frieza was actually tricking Frost all along, and although that's extremely in Frieza's character to turn on his own universal counterpart of himself, it was unique in seeing that so many people thought that the plans of Frieza and Frost were going to go even farther than what was actually shown. Furthermore, we also have to talk about fan expectations for Gohan, and as you guys would know, a lot of people have wanted Gohan to get a major role throughout Dragon Ball, and although he was one of the major characters throughout the Torment of Power, many people were creating theories and expecting Gohan to be the last fighter of the Torment of Power, and on top of this, with that outro sequence of Goku and Gohan being the last two characters, people even speculated that Gohan might actually outlast Goku throughout the Torment of Power, and although that that's not how everything turned out. I do think Gohan did go out like a champ by sacrificing himself to take out Dispo in a similar manner to how he sacrificed himself to take out Lavenda in the Universal's exhibition match. And last but not least guys, as an honorable mention, the biggest theory that actually deserves its own video in the future would have to be dealing with the evil angels. And as you guys would all remember, when Mojito smiled when Universe 9 was erased on top of the Grand Priest, everybody was expecting the angels 
angels to be evil. And as the tournament of power continued with Cus reacting completely differently, and then the rest of the angels being extremely neutral to their counterparts getting erased, it became pretty apparent at that point of time that the angels were not going to be going in this evil direction that everybody was expecting. But for the time being, it was an extremely believable theory amongst the Dragon Ball community. So overall guys, in addition to the 5 times Dragon Ball Super fooled you along with all of these fan theories, let me know in the comment section below as to your specific moments as to when Dragon Ball Super actually fooled you, or if Dragon Ball Super never actually tricked you throughout the series, let me know and why, because I kind of find it weird if Super hasn't tricked you at least one time throughout its 131 episode run. So with everything else said, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and remember as I always say to have a great day guys, and let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section below.